Okay, uh, hello everyone, sorry about that. I was just going through my Instagram inbox looking for a message that one of my followers sent me recently asking uh, how they should go about tracking their daily calorie intake as part of their overall weight loss progress monitoring. So this is a question that seems pretty obvious, um, but just, you know, the sound of it, uh, asking how do you track your calories? But um, uh, it is a question that I get asked quite a lot. Um, I don't get asked this question all the time, but when it does come, um, it comes hard and fast, as in a lot of you ask me the same question. And I am always happy to uh, explain myself, uh, you know, and repeat myself to, in order to help you with your uh, weight loss goals, right? So uh, number one, it's good that you are asking me this question because this is perhaps the most important thing uh, for you to uh, start off with, to understand the basic um, science behind uh, weight loss, right? Uh, in general, weight management, right? So it, it applies to both weight loss, weight maintenance, and even weight gain, right? So the first thing that you have to understand is that it all has to do with uh, energy coming in and out. And so in the case of us human beings, that will be in the form of energy from our food, right? So we, we measure the energy um, using calories, right? So you, you start off with that basic foundation, you're good to go. All right, so there's really no um, one size fits all approach to this, as in, you know, there's, I can't just assign you a number and say, okay, so this is X amount of calories that you need to consume for your, you know, for, for, for your gender, for your height, for your size, and this is the amount of calories for, for another person, no. Um, simply put, it will depend on each individual because there are many variables and factors that come into play. So I want to try and make this video really short while not making a complete generalization uh, out of it, but I just want to give you a basic sort of template, right? So that then you can use this to then apply it uh, to your own, um, your weight loss goals yeah? as you go through your, your progress and your journey. Okay, so basically to know how many, roughly to estimate how many calories that it is that you need, um, uh, you know, on, on a daily basis, that in terms of, in, you know, if you want, if the goal is to lose weight, to achieve a, a deficit, okay, you need to know or be aware of these three things. Okay, number one is your BMR, which stands for your basal metabolic rate. And I remember having addressed this, and I've mentioned this quite a few times already in my previous posts and videos on YouTube. So I think some of you are already pretty familiar with this. All right, your basal metabolic rate um, is AKA um, your metabolic rate, right? So sometimes we just refer to it as your metabolism or your metabolic rate, but in essence, it is your basal metabolic rate. I'll define exactly what it is in a bit, right? The next thing that you need to be concerned with is NEAT, or otherwise known as, it stands for basically non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So the clue is in the name, it's about your non-exercise activity. The stuff that you do on a daily basis, day in, day out, uh, whether it's your house chores, you're doing the laundry, washing the dishes, cooking, uh, moving about, going up and down stairs, that would count as your NEAT, yeah? your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And the last one, the third one, is your exercise activity thermogenesis. And the reason why this is last is, well, out of the three, your exercise activity is going to be the least um, significant yeah, in terms of contribution of energy output or energy expenditure of your overall energy output daily. Now, you see, even, let's just take me as an example, right? Um, I've been on this uh, weight loss journey for a while now, going into my third year, all right? And not once have I ever gone like a whole week where I exercise every day, right? And even if I did exercise up to five, maybe at the most would be six times a week, all right? So that's um, out of the seven days a week, I, I work out almost every day, and that means once a day, okay? Even when I'm working out almost every day, I only spend at the most an hour exercising, all right? And the amount of calories that I burn from my exercise activity will depend on what kind of exercise I, I, activity I, I do, right? Whether it's cardio or weightlifting, that's going to determine how many calories I burn, all right? So out of the 24 hours of the day, I'm only spending a fraction of that 
period of that of that whole time doing exercise activity. All right. So the amount of calories is insignificant. The amount of calories that you burn doing that is insignificant, insignificant compared to the other two factors. The most significant contributor would be your BMR, your basal metabolic rate. So what this is, is basically um, the amount of energy, let's put it as X amount of energy or X energy that your body requires in order to sustain uh, living, all right, um, to keep you alive. Um, so basically what this means is this is the minimum amount of calories that your body needs in order to perform uh, the most basic bodily function. Uh, functions and we're talking here very basic stuff like breathing uh, your heart your vital organs doing its thing you know pumping blood throughout your body that sort of thing so very very basic bodily functions this is the base this is the minimum amount of calories that your body needs okay in order for you to survive all right um, otherwise you would die all right so that's that's BMR and then so basically your body uses this um, by expanding energy, it's, 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 categorized, it's, it's considered as energy output. The other form of energy output is NEAT, right? So this accounts for 20-30% of your total energy output. So if the BMR is the most significant, around 60-70% okay, of your total energy output, your NEAT would account for 20-30%, right? And then exercise would be, um, at the most, is 10-15%. You know, unless you're an elite athlete, well, I would say most, most, for most people, average Joe will be less than 10%, right? So when you understand this and you know, you know, how to uh, see how your energy, sorry, how your body uses up energy, then it makes it very um, easy for you then to manage what kind of, or, or how, how many calories you need for that day, right? So just to give you a really simple calculation, all right, for in order to calculate your BMR, all you have to do is go uh, online, okay? Google BMR calculator, all right? When you get to that page, uh, it will ask you to fill in, you know, a form where you have to uh, provide your basic details, such as your gender, your height, and your, uh, your weight, yeah? So once you key in all the details, it will give you a rough estimation of what your BMR is. And keyword here being rough estimation, right? So it's not 100% accurate, um, if you do want 100% accuracy, you, you'd have to pay quite a, a bit of money and go to a sport clinic um, to get the test done. But, you know, I've never done that. And so I don't think um, anyone else really should. Um, so what you have to do is just, like I said, go online, uh, key in the details um, on the, uh, uh, the BMR calculator page, and then you'll have a rough estimation. So from there, you can um, start figuring out, okay, this is the amount of calories that I need just for just to survive, All right? So let's say, and again, I'm using myself an, as an example based on my own estimation. So at the moment, for me, I am female. I am around 78, 80 kilos, and uh, I uh, I'm five foot six. Okay, so roughly my BMI is around 1,600 to 1,700 um, calories. All right, so that is the most minimum amount of uh, calories I need daily just to survive. Now, let's say on a regular day, okay, my non-exercise activity, I burn mm, 500, 600 calories, okay? Uh, let's just, uh, just use the, the average that I think I, I, I'm, I, I've, I've been, or I'd be burning, you know, based on my, uh, my, my, my weight and my size, right? So 500 calories, okay, from NEAT, plus my BMR, which is 1,600, that is 2,100 calories, right? 2,100 calories. Now let's say on that same day, I do some exercise, right? So let's say I do some uh, cardio, 30 minute cardio, all right? And I burn another, say, 200 calories. So 2,100 plus 200 calories, that is, uh, uh, 200, uh, sorry, 2,300 calories, right? So overall, my energy output would amount to 2,300 calories. Now, in order to be in a deficit, all I have to do is make sure that I consume less than that, okay? 
So the food, all right, the calories from the food that I consumed that day must be less than 2,300 calories. It's as simple as that. So let's say I eat 2,000 calories worth of food that day, okay, um, and my energy output is 2,300, I will be in a 300 calorie deficit. Simple as that. Now, if I am consistent with that, because a 300 calorie def deficit is quite manageable, is, is pretty sustainable, and is the kind of deficit I've been in um, for, for a long time, actually. Okay, it kind of fluctuates, but 300 is like kind of like the sweet spot, especially if I want to make um, uh, more progress and more quicker. Okay, um, so if I am consistent with that, okay, in a week, if every day I manage to be in a 300 calorie deficit, so 300 times 7, that is 2100, so 2100 calories. It takes the uh, 3,500 calories, so 3,500 calories, all right, to burn or to lose one pound of fat. One pound of fat is roughly about half a kilo. So in a week, if I am in a total of 2,300, sorry, 2,100 calories, okay, based on the 300 calorie deficit daily, then um, by two weeks, I would get to that minimum Three uh, three thousand five hundred uh, calories needed to um, burn off to lose a pound of fat. So in two weeks, I'll be losing a pound or half a kilo of fat. So technically, I would lose about um, a kilogram of body fat uh, within a month, and that is actually pretty sustainable because if you think about it, if you uh, extend it to over the course of a year, if you lose a kilogram of body fat per month. Um, in a year you would lose 12 kilograms, okay? So that's how it works out. That's why you need to give it time and you cannot be too drastic with your um, calorie deficit. You see, the reason is, it goes back to the BMR, all right? So BMR, again, is the basic or the minimum amount of uh, calories that you your, your body needs to just to survive. So imagine if you were on a very low a restrictive and low calorie diet. Let's say uh, you went really hard with your dieting and um, extreme and, and you know you went on this 600 calorie diet thing which you know is never going to work and it's not sustainable right but you do it anyways because you want you want quick results okay. So your BMR let's say your BMR is 1500 calories and you go on a 600 calorie diet right you are starving yourself. That is to the point of basically malnourishment and starving yourself. So eventually what happens is, yes, you will lose weight and you will lose weight really like fast. You know, you probably, you could probably lose like 10 kilograms a month. But the inevitable is that at the end of it all, you're doing far more damage to your metabolism, all right, which then translates as your BMR in the future. Okay, so when you then eventually lose willpower, which you will, right? Even the most dedicated uh, people out there have, um, you know, a, a finite amount of willpower. It will thin out and it will just finish in the end. When you lose that willpower, all right, and you start binging on the food that you missed out on because you were restricting yourself too much, you will gain the weight back a lot faster and more than the weight that you lost and the weight that you started off with in the beginning. So you'd end up heavier than you were before. Why? Because you damage your metabolism. Your metabolism has now gone down because you restrict yourself um, in terms of you know, you know, calorie intake. And therefore your body thinks, ah, oh, well, you know, this person is, is uh, dying or starving. And so we've got to hang on to uh, you know, the, the, the fat. We've got to hang on to whatever we can in this body, conserve energy and, and not you know, get this person moving so much and in, in a way what it has to do is to then lower your metabolism so that it can conserve the energy otherwise you know because it thinks you're dying and you're starving and being malnourished therefore it thinks that you know your 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 death is 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 pending right so again it's all about the body's way of ensuring survival so that is why you need to be smart about it and not go to the extreme um, and and be in two low of uh, a calorie deficit and as long as you're consistent all right and you have to be consistent daily weekly monthly all right whatever it takes eventually you will get there right? like i said even if you 
um, you know, over the course of a week, you're losing um, half, half, a, half a kilo or a pound of fat. That's way more than enough. In fact, losing one kilogram body fat a month is, is a lot. Trust me. You know, I, this is coming from someone who has been consistently losing weight over the last three years. A kilogram of, of body fat a month. We're not even um, factoring in uh, water weight uh, and other uh, parts of your body composition, right? So just body fat alone, a kilogram a month, that's a lot. And so if you can sustain that, imagine in a year you would lose 12 kilograms. And if you do that in a way that is efficient and sustainable, you will keep the weight off and you'll be happy for it. Right? And you'll never have to have to go through you know, the same journey of having to lose the weight that you gain back as a result of your extreme and drastic uh, methods. Okay, so I hope this has kind of uh, made it re uh, more clear for you, all right, or clearer. Um, and so just to sum up again, it's the three things, your BMR, your NEAT, your exercise activity. Those are the three things that contribute towards your energy output. And if you want to lose weight, all you have to do is be in a calorie deficit and account for those three things I just mentioned. All right, so thanks for watching. Hope it's been useful. Again, if you have any further questions you want to ask me, please feel free to um, DM me and I will try my best to help you as uh, best I can. All right, see you guys. Thanks for watching.